Welcome back, everyone. For those of you who are viewing this video first, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Danielle Plotz, and I'm a pediatric neuropsychologist at the Kennedy Krieger Institute. I work as part of an interdisciplinary team and a day rehabilitation program for children and adolescents with a variety of diagnoses and conditions, including acquired brain injuries. As a reminder, this is the third video in a series on traumatic brain injury. So if you've not had a chance to see the first two videos in this series, which discusses an overview of neuroanatomy and classification of brain injury, I encourage you to check those out for additional information. In this segment, I will be discussing common outcomes following traumatic brain injury and trajectory of recovery. Although it would be a gross oversimplification to look at left side and right side functioning, it is sometimes helpful to understand that there are some specializations within each hemisphere. For example, if there is a right-sided injury, you are more likely to see dysfunction or difficulty with a lack of awareness to the left side of the body or a lack of awareness of any sort of injury in general. You may also see impairments with visual spatial information and recalling visual information like pictures. People may have more difficulty seeing the big picture and may have difficulty with motor control or the opposite side of their body or the left side in the case of a right-sided brain injury. An injury to the left side of the brain may look different in many ways. You are more likely to see difficulty with language, difficulty with remembering verbal information, and with logic. People with injuries to the left side of the brain are more likely to experience depression and anxiety following injury. And they are more likely to experience contralateral or opposite side of the brain injury difficulty with things like motor control. And for more diffuse or widespread brain injuries, you can see reduced thinking speed, increased confusion and fatigue, and more global impairments. It is important to keep in mind that no two brain injuries are the same. Not only are there individual differences in the injuries themselves, but also in terms of recovery, resources, and the individual themselves. Certainly there may be commonalities to brain injuries as a whole, but each one is unique. For brain injury, it is important to understand what research shows in terms of trajectory of recovery. The fastest recovery is seen in the first six months to a year following a brain injury. The brain continues to recover as much as possible, but the rate of recovery is much slower. It is important to understand that it is more of a marathon, not a sprint. This graph from educational material distributed by the Department of the Veterans Administration shows a hypothetical recovery curve. A TBI of any severity can result in changes that affect a child's daily life. You can see in this graph that the more rapid recovery, regardless of severity, occurs early on, and then the rate slows and continues to demonstrate improvements over time. As you can see, the graph suggests that there are individuals with moderate or severe brain injuries that may not return to their pre-injury level of skills. In children in particular, the significance and magnitude of these difficulties may not be fully realized until years after the injury when these higher level cognitive and behavioral skills are required developmentally. As children continue to develop, different demands and expectations can be required, and thus we may begin to see areas of difficulty that were not necessarily seen before. For example, a child who sustained a severe traumatic brain injury before age five may be able to function reasonably well in a kindergarten classroom where there is structure and supports put in place for organizing materials and planning activities because this is done for most five-year-olds. However, when this same child is in high school or even middle school, the expectations for organizing materials and planning how to complete tasks has increased such that there is more independence expected and thus the same child may struggle in a way that is noticeable to other adults and their peers. So it's really important to consider the functional impact overall and as they continue to develop. There are a variety of factors that can impact overall outcome. This image captures some of the many variables that can influence outcome. In addition to the severity of injury and the management following that injury, there are many other factors to consider, including individual patient characteristics, age and pre-injury functioning can play a huge role in a child's recovery. For example, Co-occurring developmental conditions and other health conditions can prolong or even exacerbate injury symptoms. Socioeconomic status and family functioning can also play a factor in recovery. And finally, access to health care is a factor that can influence outcomes. So what are some of the areas you would more commonly see long-standing deficits? 
Again, this is not an exhaustive list and every injury is unique, so it's important to have information from a healthcare professional to understand the specific areas of strength and difficulty of each individual. There may be physical changes such as fatigue, motor control difficulty, and balance and coordination problems. For some, they now experience seizures, sensory deficits with vision or hearing, swallowing difficulty, or bowel and bladder control difficulty. And for each of these, it can be a range of how much it interferes with functioning from minimal to severe. Some individuals require assistive devices or medications to aid in the quality of life. Perceptual changes can also be newly acquired following TBI and can involve difficulty with understanding spatial relationships with objects, where they are in relation to the object, or awareness to one side of their body, termed unilateral neglect. In some cases, there are actual visual field cuts this can be one eye missing vision to both eyes not being able to see a proportion of the visual field. For example, they might not be able to see the left half region in both eyes. Imagine looking through binoculars that have a sheet of paper over the left half of both eye pieces. Communication changes can be challenging for individuals following a TBI. It can be more difficult to initiate conversations for the person and once the person is engaged in conversation, it can be difficult to keep up and follow along. They can also experience difficulty with waiting their turn and picking up on social cues within a conversation. This can be especially challenging when there are larger groups of individuals. Some individuals may be harder to understand when they speak or may not pick up on nonverbal communication cues. Changes to other areas of thinking can include confusion, difficulties remembering, difficulties with attention, following through on assignments and tasks, difficulties with making decisions, or getting started on a task. Let's take a closer look at some of these areas that might now be difficult for someone after a TBI. Attention is one area that I often see as more challenging for children and adolescents, but how that plays out behaviorally might look obvious as if they're not focused, or it might look a little different. Attention difficulties may look like they keep changing topics frequently, or it may look like they're not completing tasks. Maybe the child has several projects they're working on and none of them seem to get finished. They're always working on one of them. And maybe the child or teen tries to work on two things simultaneously, but then become very confused or upset when doing so. These all may be signs of attention problems. Problems with memory may seem like they would always be obvious and look like someone just has difficulty with recalling information, but that is not always the case. Memory problems can also be the root of someone frequently missing appointments. It might not just be that they're irresponsible or avoiding something. It could be a serious impairment with their memory. Saying they will do something and never getting around to it could also be another sign that there's a problem with memory. If someone is telling the same story to you over and over and asks the same questions, this could be simply that they don't have the memory of telling or asking you previously. Or maybe when they give you an answer to a question, they insert plausible details that are made up simply because they're trying to have all the pieces to the puzzle that neatly fit together. Executive functionings are another area where there can be a lot of difficulties and variability in how these play out behaviorally. It is a very large category of many different functions, from initiation to impulsive behaviors to being able to transition from one task to the next. So if someone has difficulty with executive functionings, it might look like having difficulty with planning and organizing and being disorganized, but it may also appear that someone is being uncooperative or that they're just stubborn and not participating. They may also lack follow through or have difficulty with persisting on tasks. The individual may appear to have some laziness or may be called lazy by others, but really the difficulty is with those frontal lobe functions that have been impacted as a result of the traumatic brain injury. Finally, the individual may be perceived as being irresponsible for a variety of reasons, many of which I've mentioned. So difficulties with one particular area of thinking may be straightforward and present as one might expect, but there may also be a variety of different behavioral presentations that are less obvious to both the individual and others observing them. The last area I would like to touch base on is that of emotional regulation. Emotional regulation is exactly what it sounds like, 
the ability to modulate and regulate your emotional responses. And an emotional regulation difficulty may look like someone is overreacting or they may have a tearful response that seems to come out of the blue. They may also be described as being very upset over something minor like being told to put his paper away. There may also be descriptions where there is a mismatch between the context of the situation and the emotional display. So to summarize briefly, a TBI of any severity experienced by a child or adolescent can result in changes that affect the child's daily life. We're still learning a lot about TBI in children and recovery trajectories, but current research suggests that the most rapid recovery is seen early on with injuries. It is so important to understand the individual's areas of strengths and areas of difficulty following a traumatic brain injury because of the variability and uniqueness of each injury. Finally, it is important to understand that the effects of brain injury in children have added complexity because the injury impacts the brain as it is still developing. In other words, the child's course of recovery is then superimposed on normal developmental processes which can not only affect already acquired skills, but the potential to affect future skills and development. Thank you for your time, and I hope you found the information today helpful. If you are interested in learning more about brain injury, please go to the Kennedy Krieger Institute's brain injury website found at the end of this video. See you in the next segment where I will be focusing on mild traumatic brain injury.